The winds guide you. Hey guys, it's Classic Winds back for another video. World of Warcraft's a pretty old game. It's actually older than YouTube. So there's probably a lot of things that not all of us remember about the game, unless you've played private servers or things like that. So I wanted to show you all 10 things in Classic WoW you probably didn't know. If you think you know it all, try and guess when each of these features were removed. I'll tell you at the end of the video and you can see how you did. So one of the big arguments about Classic World of Warcraft is no Dungeon Finder tool. But what if I was to tell you Vanilla World of Warcraft did have a Dungeon Finder tool? Don't worry, it's not that one. It's actually one that worked even worse than that. The one I'm talking about is Meeting Stones. Uh, what today we know as Summoning Stones, back then they didn't do summoning, they acted as a Dungeon Finder at the dungeon. Or you could ask an innkeeper who would put you into a queue. The innkeeper would also show a list of dungeons around your level and even some lore about the dungeons. But nobody used these, and that's because it didn't ask your role. And since nobody else was using them, it just snowballed and people just kept not using them. It could even put 5 DPS together if that's all who clicked the things. So a lot of people don't even remember that this was in the game. Flasks are going to be an extremely important part of raiding in classic World of Warcraft. Before you can take down some of the big bad bosses like Cthulhu and Nefarian, it's going to be a good idea if you bring some of these. But did you know that flasks actually require a specific location to be crafted? You have to either be in Scalamance or Blackwing Lair and standing in front of an alchemy lab. And those alchemy labs are only found in Scalamance right before the Ras Frost Whisper boss, and in Blackwing Lair right after the Broodlord Laylasher Lash Lair boss. So before your raid, make a trip to either one of these locations and then uh, craft away. Crit, Haste, and Hit are great secondary stats. For most of WoW's life, you open up the character tab, and then th there they are. But in vanilla, you couldn't actually see your crit there. For melee crit, you would open up your spell book, mouse over the auto attack, and there it is. Then where it gets weird. Spell crit you can't see anywhere in the game. You have to do math, and it's different for each class. For example, look at a paladin with 80 intellect, and they would get 4% crit at level 60. Plus, you then add the items and the talents. This is one of those things that I wouldn't be surprised if Blizzard does change in Classic. Mounts worked a little bit differently in Classic. They stored in your bags, they had a 3 second cast, and then when you walked in the water, you dismounted. Some mounts even had racial restrictions. Mechanist Riders were only rideable by Dwarves and Gnomes. And then the Raptors and Death Chargers could not be rode by Torrin. The exception to that is that the Dungeon and Raid mounts, such as the Rivendare's Death Charger, Zulian Tiger, and Rizashi Raptor were usable by Torrin. So if you plan on collecting every mount in the game, think about that first. We all know bag space is very limited in World of Warcraft Classic. Bags are smaller in general, hunters have quivers, warlocks have soul shards, everybody's gotta keep reagents, and all of those things. But did you know that the banks are smaller too? You'll actually be missing 4 item slots and also a bag slot. And if you're really new, you're gonna notice the whole reagent tab is gone too. Raid lockouts were a different animal back in Classic. Progress is actually tied to a fixed instance ID. So what that means is you may not enter with a new group until your raid lockout is reset. So if the other players in your group complete at the instance while you're absent, the instance is still going to be empty for you because the progress is actually tied to the instance ID and not to your character. Many of the raids in Classic even had different lockout times, so potentially you could do them more than once a week. So let's go over those lockouts. Zulgurup was 3 days. The Ruins of Anchorage, that's AQ20, was 3 days. Uh, Nixia's Lair was 5 days, Molten Core was 7 days, Blackwing Lair was also 7 days, AQ40 was also 7 days, and Nax40 was as well 7 days. All of the 7 day dungeons will reset on the Tuesday if you're in US Realms uh, during the maintenance. Professions in Classic World of Warcraft play a bigger role than possibly at any other point in WoW's history. For example, first aid is very necessary for everything in the game. It'll help with your leveling, your PvP, your farming, and even raiding. But back then, professions had to be trained throughout the world, and often through quests. For example, first aid was leveled past the 225 skill level through a quest in either Theramore's Alliance or Hammerfell as Horde. The quest would have you saving people who are dying on the ground. Some profession trainers were only found in Far Outlands, and the enchanting trainer the only one to get past 225 skill was actually located deep inside of the Oldeman instance. Things like that are what truly made World of Warcraft feel like a world. So in my last video, I mentioned the differences between the factions. But one thing that I didn't mention was that your faction choice on a PvP realm is even more important. That's because you can only pick one faction on PvP realms. 
so you can't have a Horde character and an Alliance character on the same realm. It really makes your choice matter, and it will stop people from the opposite faction making level 1 characters and shit-talking you. It also helps to stop cross-faction collusion and exploiting of certain game mechanics due to that. In classic World of Warcraft, some weapons have additional elemental damage. Has anyone ever heard of a weapon called Thunder Fury Blessed Blade of the Windseeker? Yeah, this weapon actually has a little bit of extra nature damage on it. So that damage means that when you attack someone, it will do the physical damage plus the nature damage. The nature damage ignores the target's armor, so it's kind of a cool way for some melee specs to get some elemental damage on a target or some shadow damage or whatever type of spell damage you wanted. See, another famous example of these weapons is uh, Shadow Fang, used by level 19 twink rogues all over the world. It was and will be a fun addition to the game once again. Alright, the last thing I was going to mention in this is that some fish are seasonal. Those fish are the winter squid and the summer bass. And this is real life seasons, meaning that winter squid can only be caught between September 23rd and March 19th in real time. And Summer Bass is the opposite, so that'll be from March 20th until September 22nd. And this is actually important, because Winter Squid is cooked into really good agility food, and it's great for some classes. So if World of Warcraft Classic launches before September 23rd, you can fish up some Summer Bass, and you can potentially be one of the few people who actually own these fish for quite a while. So, did you actually remember all of that? Alright, let's see how much you knew. When were Meeting Stones changed to be Summoning Stones? That was changed in patch 2.0.1 of the Burning Crusades. When was Flask requiring Alchemy Labs removed? Wrath of Lich King patch 3.0.8 When was Spell, Crit, and Hit showing in the Character Sheet tab added? Sometime in the Burning Crusades. Racial Mount Restrictions were not removed until Wrath of the Lich King patch 3.0.8 So additional slots for your bank and then the bag slots for the bank were not added until... Sometime during the Burning Crusades those were added in. So when was raids being on different days for their lockouts changed? Technically, this was actually never changed, because AQ20 is still the only raid that has a different reset time. So when was it changed so that the profession trainers are all located in the side of cities so that you can reach 300 skill? That was actually changed in patch 2.3.0 of the Burning Crusades. Horde and Alliance characters being restricted on PvP realms was actually not lifted until Wrath of the Lich King patch 3.2.0. So when did weapons stop having elemental damage on them? So in the Cataclysm 4.0.1 patch, it removed elemental damage from all the weapons which used to have it. So when did seasonal fish stop being a thing? Actually, there still are seasonal fish. The winter squid and the summer bass are always seasonal. They always have been. Alright, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Did you know everything on the list? Did any of them surprise you? Let me know in the comments. I always read all of them. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. I'll keep uploading every week in anticipation for Classic World of Warcraft.